we're not just talking about, you know, get eight hours of sleep, drink this many liters of water, eat your green vegetables. I mean, let's be honest. It's great to be healthy. It's great to get moderate exercise. It's great to have a balanced diet and we can do a lot of healing through our diet. But a lot of the things that are ailing people won't shift with just those changes. They, it has to be accompanied with how am I living? How am I being? What is going on inside my mind? Now, I love the example of you, know, you can have all the kale smoothies in yoga that you want, but if you don't deal with what goes on in here, you know, you will still be struggling. And we first really need to understand, you know, from a holistic perspective, you know, as a homeopath, I was, I'm taking someone's case, I'd really want, want to understand what is the underlying imbalance that is expressing itself as migraines. And so that's an inquiry that if you haven't had a chance to visit a holistic doctor, you wouldn't necessarily have in mind. Most people believe that when something ails them in their body, you know, that it's caused by something specific. They don't necessarily think that your entire life, you know, gets expressed in how your body and your mind functions. Uh, I once had a job that I really didn't like, it was a desk job, but I had moved with my husband to a different, to a different place, um, far from home, and we were both working there and we really liked where we were, but, and the job was really working for him that we had in the city, but it wasn't working for me. But I didn't really want to admit it to myself because my visa was tied to that job. It wasn't in Canada and it was just complicated. And while I was working at this job that I didn't really like, I developed frozen shoulder. I went to every imaginable treatment one could do for frozen shoulder, but my shoulder didn't get better. And it wasn't until I, which took me some time, admitted that as I was sitting there typing, you know, do kind of going like this unconsciously because I didn't really want to be typing the things I was typing. You know, it wasn't until I admitted that to myself that I began to see that, okay, there's more being held in my shoulder. And as I started to work through some of those things, the other treatments um, started to work better and I, my shoulder healed. Whenever something ails us, we have to look at it through a multi-pronged layer. The first layer is make sure there's nothing sinister going on. You know, go get a checkup, that's sensible. And then when that checkup doesn't reveal anything alarming, which is actually the vast majority, you know, the vast majority of doctor visits to medical doctors, they're stress-related conditions. There's no obvious reason nor any really great treatment. And then people tend to broaden their search and go to the homeopath, the naturopath, the traditional Chinese medicine doctor, and they're still often looking for what's wrong with me, not where is the underlying imbalance. People don't tend to think like that until they've been hanging around with us for longer. But then you start to have some more options and you start to see, okay, I could work on my diet. I could add supplements to make myself more resilient. I could use energy medicine in the form of homeopathy or acupuncture to try and stimulate my body to respond differently given the past and the present stressors that it's under. Then there's this whole other category. Sometimes that will fall into the realm of therapists, psychotherapists of one kind or another, but a lot of that work you can do on your own, which is inquiry as, as in the example with my shoulder. You know, what is really going on? Where is there an imbalance? Why am I susceptible to this set of circumstances? People are afraid to do that in the case of more significant chronic ailments because we're conditioned to believe that it's something, you know, it's something serious, it's something physical. Even if it is, you know, there's always a component of inquiry that we can do, not because we're trying to blame ourselves, but because we're actually just trying to take personal responsibility. And we're trying to give ourselves the best chance of healing, and that requires stepping into, oh, what am I not saying that is really important to me? What am I tolerating that's really intolerable? What am I suppressing within myself? What am I not expressing that I really wish to be expressing? You know, where am I holding a kind of contraction that I'm not really dealing with? Where am I in denial? 
Now, those are the kinds of things, you know, where am I still angry? Where am I afraid? Where am I hurt? How is that showing up in my relationships? So that's a long list and not all of them will necessarily apply to you. Certainly not in every moment. But going through that list as an exercise, as an inquiry, it will really bring richness and depth to the self-care that you can do for yourself. When we're looking at the balance between self-care and medicine, there's really a propensity to believe that someone external is going to fix it for us. And it's very rarely the case. Sometimes there's surgeries that are needed or sometimes there's, but even in those cases, there's often an additional component that led or contributed to us being in the circumstance. And if we want to prevent the recurrence of that circumstance, we have to change something in the way that we're living. It's such an inconvenient truth because it's so much easier to believe that someone else could heal or fix us, but I have really not known that to be the case. 